Good day. Welcome to another edition of Spotlight on Mayapac Schools. Eric Gross, your host, along with Superintendent of Schools, Anthony DiCarlo, on the track of Mayapac High. Yeah, I mean, this is, uh, I talked to you about the Mayapac Way, and this event, I think it's the 21st year, is really about what Mayapac is so special about and, and what this community has done in, in reaching out to help with the fight and the battle against cancer is, is just a part of who we are as a community. And we're proud as a Mayapac Central School District to be able to host us every year. And of course, the Mayapac Relay is in the top 10 of all relays. You heard me right. In the eastern United States, of money raised for cancer research, and and that's again the outpouring of the community to understand about this battle, and all of us have been touched by it in some manner, and it's just a day to be able to remember, to reflect, um, and then to really battle this disease so someday we can eradicate it. We're going to talk to some of those people involved in the cancer relay, but before we do, Anthony wants a special thanks to you folks out there in Greater Mayapac Land for coming out in May the third week in May on a very special evening. Yeah, I, I, Eric, I, I can't thank the community from the bottom of my heart, from the student's heart and the teacher's heart for supporting us both with the budget and the capital bond. It's going to allow us to take Mayapac to new heights. Um, we're excited about it. You know, over the next three years, you're going to see a lot of great things done in our buildings. We've talked about only only with our buildings, but academically, and, and I'm, I can't be proud enough of this community and your support and uh, having confidence in us to take this district to that next level. So again, thank you very, very much. Yes, thank you one and all out there. A couple of interesting programs have taken place within the Mayapac School District as this last quarter, as the school year winds down, graduation right around the corner. Yeah, it's another three weeks we have graduations, we have moving up. It, June is a great month for celebrations on a, an incredible year, celebrating those seniors who are gonna be going on to college and career. It's a great, great time here you know, for schools, especially here in Mayapac. We're excited about the next three weeks and the great events that are going to be happening. The athletic department deserves a special gold star. Yeah, we had a great uh, spring season. Our boys and girls lacrosse teams went to the semifinals. Our girls um, softball varsity team lost a heartbreaker to uh, John J. East Fish School 4-3. to three. So we really have a lot of great things. Our track team did wonderful. You know, our baseball team did very, very well this year. So we had a great spring season. I want to thank all those student athletes who are seniors who are going on to college. Some of them will be playing. Thank you for giving us incredible memories over your times at the Mayapac schools, allowing us to come out and celebrate your talents on the athletic field. So again, all the best. And not to single out any one student, but we have to single out one student, a young lady by the name of Shannon. Yeah, and you'll, you'll, you'll see a little bit about who Shannon is and how humble she is. She just had an incredible sophomore year. She's been recognized by the state on a national level for her accomplishments on a perfect, perfect game. She's pitched other no-hitters, and you know we congratulate her, but most importantly, the whole team, because you have to have a team behind you, both at bat and in the field, to be able to allow Shannon to do things she does. So. Again, Shannon and the whole team, congratulations. We had the pleasure of talking to Shannon. Let's go back and say hi. We've all heard about a young lady from Mayapac High, a sophomore, who did a feat the other day. Huh, eh, not so good. We're just joking, of course. We're talking about Shannon Becker. And Shannon completed and pitched, not the perfect game, but the perfect, perfect game. What does that mean? Um, a perfect, perfect game means that you... No one got on base, but for it to be that's a perfect game, but for it to be a perfect, perfect game, you strike out all 21 batters. You heard her right, struck out all 21 batters. 60 mile an hour pitches, I hear? Yeah, like 64. 64, better than that. <laughs> what does that mean to you, an accomplishment like this? Um, I'm just really humbled by it. Um, it made me realize all my hard work has come together and I'm just very appreciative of all the acknowledgement I've been getting for my hard work. When you say hard work, when did you start playing ball? I started playing basically I for, since I was born. I was always throwing a ball around but I started actually playing games when I was like six or seven. Six or seven and yeah. now you are? Sixteen. So 10 years later, we have a champion over here. Future looks bright, huh? Yes. <laughs> we have two more years at Mayor Pack High. What else is out there for you now? Um, I'm hoping as a team to um, compete in sectionals and make it very far and hopefully bring back a section title one of these years. So that's one of my big goals. Strikeouts. 
numbers mm -hmm. for the year? Um, I'm just focusing on the games. I'm not trying to focus on the numbers and the stats and just win the games. And if they come, they come. Well, this young lady is a very special gal. Now, besides all her academic prowess, I shouldn't say her athletic prowess, straight A student. Yes. Look at that smile. <laughs> It means a lot to you, doesn't it? Yes. Uh, student athlete, ath uh, student always comes first, so. And what's so special, too, is this young lady's been interviewed on CBS. Where else? Um, CBS, Fox News, Fios. ESPN? Um, ESPN, yeah. MLB, uh, Barstool. So as you can see, you know, she's been around, but still she's very humbled, and she's talking about the academics before the athleticism. Super gal, congratulations. Thank you. Thank Keep you. up the good work. Thank you. Well, as the sign says, the newest member of the Mayapak Academy is Carlos. Dr. Greg Stoll, assistant superintendent, is with us today. And Greg, tell us about Carlos. Well, Eric, uh, Carlos is the newest member of our academy, as you said. Carlos is a service dog. He's a comfort dog. Um, the academy team um, really started to think about what is what else can we do uh, the academy is a therapeutic program for kids with social emotional dysregulation and we hatched this plan way back in september to get a comfort dog a service dog it actually came from a student a student one day said can we get a dog and i said until my kids get a dog you're not getting a dog so we got fish fish wasn't good enough so we were working all year and we finally uh, miss nolan one of our special ed teachers here in the academy said you know i have a guiding eyes dog that's fully trained that is used for breeding and he would be wonderful so three months of red tape as schools do um, and carlos is here right before the spring break he came and uh, our students worked on welcoming him and understanding what his role is what their role is he's not a dog you play fetch with and feed treats to, though he loves, loves treats, um, he really has a job to do here, and that is to make sure everybody feels comfortable and calm, and um, we know from the research that um, facility dogs do that. How many youngsters are involved in the academy? So we have about 60 students, Eric, um, that are in our academy uh, for part or whole of the day, and what we found in the academy in the last four years is that our graduation rates have gone up, uh, student attendance has gone up, GPAs have either stayed the same or gone up. It has been a wonderful program, so much that we have other districts that send students to us um, because of the wonderful work that our teachers do and our teaching assistants do. It's uh, uh, one of the joys is to come down here and uh, hang with the kids and uh, watch the teachers do their magic. Shall we meet Carlos? Oh, that'd be great. Carlos. Hello, Carlos. Carlos is taking a rest right now. Good morning. Well, Carlos's mommy is Christine Nolan. And Christine, what kind of a buddy, a family member is Carlos? Carlos is the best kind of family member. He doesn't talk back at all. Um, as you see, he's really calm, and he just makes everyone around him comfortable. And he makes everyone smile. Everyone in this building seems a lot happier to see me. <laughs> so that's all good, all good. You and your whole family take yes. care of Carlos? Yes. Well, my daughter, Caitlin, is his primary um, caretaker, so she's been generous enough to let me bring him in. Um, she's here, too. She's going to help me. And, um, yeah, our whole family. We, f we foster him. He's a breeding dog for the guiding eyes. And um, that entails that we just have to give him long walks, and we have to be available when they need him at the guiding eyes. And, um, and he's ours. He's ours um, in our home. And we bring him here now, I would say three to four days a week. We just started this a few weeks ago. So um, it's working really well, really well. And the staff involved, what kind of reaction do the kids get when they see Carlos? It's impossible to be cranky around <laughs> Carlos. Um, we've had a few situations where a student was really withdrawing, hood up, kind of hiding, and Carlos just walks by and the hood opens and the hand comes out and it starts a whole conversation. Um, it's been a tremendous tool to help connect with kids and help kids to feel comfortable in this space. Dr. Kate, what about you? Well, I just applaud my teachers and my, my administrators here who have helped us bring in yet another innovative, uh, out-of-the-box thinking for really capturing all students in the different ways and they learn and the different things they might need to, to come to school and to get that education. Um, so this is just another thing that Mayapac is doing um, to lead the way and provide a wonderful opportunity for our students here to keep them in school, keep them engaged, and uh, keep them connected. 
Looks like Carlos had you hit a home run here, huh? Yeah, Carlos did all the heavy lifting, and uh, our teachers, our teachers, and our students are better for it. And it really has gone even to the the high school. Everybody wants to see Carlos now. Can you bring him up? Can you bring him to the other classes? And then we have other schools saying, "Can you bring Carlos down for uh, kindergarten orientation day? I think he'd be a hit." So um, he, he just started. And what we know is, I've seen. Uh, as as uh, Ms. Clemens said, we have seen students open up in ways that we haven't seen them. Even though, they're, by all measures, they're successful here, they've opened up in other ways in terms of their ability to emote and communicate that we haven't seen yet. So he just is another tool in our arsenal to really help students maximize their potential to learn. It is the Mayapac way. And it's so cool, Carl Carlos. Sasha, if you can zoom in, where is Carlos's ID oh, tag? I thought this was the coolest thing. <laughs> Carlos even has a Mayapac Central School District ID tag. And what does that say on there? It just says the date and his name. It says Carlos. And it has like the, the school year. And his photograph as yeah. well. Carlos. The one from up here. Yeah. Well, welcome, Carlos. We wish you a good re rest of the school year. And um, Carlos is going to be around for some time. Yeah, we, we, we look forward to that. Another Mayor Pack Way winner, Carlos. One of our favorite survivors each year here at the Relay is Ellen Prismilski. And Ellen, good Thank seeing you. you. Thank, it's good to be seen. <laughs> Thank you. You gave a very moving talk. Thank you. What is a survivor? A survivor is all of those things, uh, anywhere from being brave to being scared. Um, and our families are survivors because they support us through all of that. And they have to survive those moods with us and um, my husband Stan is great uh, he really never knew what he was going to get when I got up in the morning uh, but uh, but we've made it through and it's been uh, it's been a long time and I'm glad I'm here. Stan what do you have to say to this brave lady over here? She's amazing that's all I can say I don't know how she does it. Stan is a man of few words. Yes and, and good ones. <laughs> and good ones. Yes. Stan, Ellen we thank you very very much. Thank you. You will. Okay Eric. Gentleman in the pink striped shirt, Mike Simone, Carmel's highway superintendent and a member of the Mayor Pack Board of Ed. What a nice turnout today. Oh, fantastic, and, and what a great cause. And it's always this community here in Mohopak is always tremendous and supportive of the, uh, this cancer fight. So, yeah. You know, as Anthony said, every family, every family in Putnam County has been affected in some way with this horrible disease. We have to find a cure. Oh, definitely, definitely. You know, I, I'm a survivor since 1994, and thank God I'm here, and thank God that I had some great doctors, but we got to keep fighting to get rid of this and get so there's no more cancer around. So, yeah. Michael, we thank you. Thank you. Michael Simone. Lillian Jones, the former executive director of the American Cancer Society, and of course our good friend now, Latriciano of Carmel, and Lillian, what a great turnout. Oh, it's fabulous, and a fabulous day also for such a good cause. It's uh, great to see so many people banding together to do good for patients and for um, making sure that people don't get cancer in the future and providing services. And, you know, Al's daughter, Al has been involved with uh, the Cancer Society for a very long time, and she helps run the relays internationally, right? Tell us about your daughter, Al. Laura is uh, strictly a volunteer, but she goes all over the world uh, promoting and telling people how to run a Relay for Life. And she does it. She just got back from Luxembourg uh, about, about three weeks ago. Yeah. Why do you walk each year? Uh, actually, fortunately, I'm one of the survivors, and uh, I'd like to let people know that there is a chance to survive, and uh, more and more so every year. And uh, I'm here to support that uh, vision. Al, Lillian, we thank you very much. Thank you, Eric. And thank you again for everyone who showed up today here at the Mayor Pack Relay. Thank you. So again, it's been a great relay, a great uh, spring in the Mayor Pack schools. Yeah, it's been a, an exciting spring, as we talked about before. Um, and, I, and again, you know, we close out this year, but we start up and running for the following year. And believe it or not, we've already started to have conversations about the bond and next steps and what's going to happen. So excited about it, looking forward to graduation or moving up ceremonies over the next couple of weeks. We'll see you at graduation. We will. Again, thank you for all you do. Superintendent of Schools, Anthony DiCarlo. I'm Eric Gross. We thank you, Sash, for your able assistance. You've been watching Spotlight on Mayor Pack Schools. Until next time, bye-bye now. For more information, please visit our website, www.mayopac.k12.ny.us.